Now, we know Britain is dealing with some serious issues now, including high inflation, soaring energy costs, the possibility of a recession. You have a brand new prime minister. Is it possible that King Charles is trying to position himself as something of a unifier here? Yes, I think he is trying to position himself as a unifier. As you say, we are on the brink of recession here. Energy prices, the effects of the global conflict crisis have caused great energy prices, huge inflation running at past uh, 13%, I think the latest estimate is. So we are in quite difficult times in Britain. And I think Charles here is, is really focusing, as he said, on the, the family, the wider family realms. Because, Jake, this is Charles's big challenge as a monarch, not just the situation that we're in in Britain, but also the future of the Commonwealth and the future of the other countries of which the monarch is head of state. The monarch is head of state of 15 countries. Last year, Barbados decided they no longer wish the monarch to be head of state. We've heard Australia say the same, Jamaica, um, Antigua, um, Belize. There's been generally, I, I think, and they all said that once the Queen was no longer here, these were discussions they would really accelerate. And I think in the next few years, we'll see many countries no longer have the monarch of head of state. And I think the Commonwealth, that 54 nations, 2.1 billion people, so important to the Queen, her, her real abiding legacy, I think that's going to change because to many members of the Commonwealth, it was a sense of unity, but to them, many of them feel it's founded in the in the oppression of empire, the exploitation of empire. And there are other countries they wish to ally with, not Britain, but other countries across the world. So we will see, I think, the Commonwealth fragment. And I think that Charles will be head of very few, very fewer countries than his mother was. And that is his big challenge to oversee that transition in a in a really in a really way that celebrates independence. Yeah, let's talk about that, because there has been some criticism uh, in the last couple of days, uh, not specifically of the Queen, but the Queen is a figurehead for the UK and, and imperialism, colonialism. The South African opposition party, the Economic Freedom Fighters, put out a statement that said in part, quote, we do not mourn the death of Elizabeth because to us her death is a reminder of a very tragic period in this country and Africa's history. During her 70 year reign as Queen, she never once acknowledged the atrocities that her family inflicted on native people that Britain invaded across the world, unquote. How should Charles go about addressing this, do you think? William and Kate made a visit to the Caribbean, and this was not a successful royal visit. Many people felt that it was colonial in tone and look. They travelled in a sort of back of a large car, and it looked very colonial, and they didn't really talk about, they didn't apologise for slavery. And also, there's been a scandal more recently in Britain where those who came over from Jamaica post-war uh, to rebuild the country, and the children who came over with them, just tiny children, who thought they were British citizens, suddenly... In 2011, 2012, the British government tried to deport them. This is called the Windrush scandal. That caused a lot of anger across the Caribbean that people who always thought of themselves as British suddenly were being deported. And we, I think, really, um, this should have been acknowledged during the visit. So what we are going to see, I think, is Charles really having to discuss this question of slavery, of perhaps reparations, and also of the suffering that countries have been through, this great exploitation under empire.